Ronald Nicholas, and uh, I'm here to talk about uh, the framework for building PHP based uh, learning tools. It's, the framework is called uh, Chugi, and it's being developed uh, by Dr. Charles Severance from the University of Michigan. Uh, so, uh, we are uh, we're living in, in the rise of the learning management systems. Uh, so, uh, almost well, virtually every uh, university learning institution has adopted a learning management system uh, for internal use or for more open access. Uh, by now, almost uh, all the LMSs that are on offer uh, meet the structural and operational uh, needs of the institution. They provide uh, big, stable platforms uh, adequate for the use that they, they receive. And uh, also the reports of uh, the people using them, both educators and the learners, are pretty positive. And uh, the most LMSs are considered uh, feature complete, more or less. Right? So uh, the problem is that uh, having this and being satisfied uh, means that maybe you will not uh, use some risks that are to come. We are uh, in uh, an ever-changing environment, both in, uh, technologically, also with the coming of the MOOCs, the previous two speakers have uh, said, that there are risks uh, that uh, are looming over the LMS. Uh, first, you have too much offer. Uh, there are a lot of uh, LMSs, uh, both free and uh, commercial. Uh, also, most of them uh, seem to be copying one another. So you have uh, more or less the same uh, interfaces, uh, same features. If one adapts a new feature, the others uh, have it in a matter of weeks. Uh, and uh, also, uh, the LMS is actually uh, in their current state are becoming less flexible and also there has been a, a, re a reduction in the uh, innovation lately. Uh, all these reasons could lead to a potential future fall of uh, the LMS. Uh, uh, so, uh, some of the changes that are coming uh, that uh, all the LMS need to be aware of is the innovation of mobile devices. Uh, now, every, every year, uh, every course, you have more people uh, using exclusively their mobile devices to access uh, their LMS interface with that. Uh, social uh, web tools uh, like uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, what have you. And uh, also, there is uh, some um, uh, differences uh, between uh, learning content, the producer of the learning content, and uh, the actual uh, learning content. So you can have uh, learning contents that are uh, commercial, uh, you can have some that are open access, and uh, the, the public for each of them um, differs and may also cause uh, troubles along the way. Um, so, um, the solution obviously to all that is to have the LMS be flexible, uh, able to adapt to these new technologies, um, mobile devices for example, uh, providing uh, mobile themes uh, or mo mo dedicated mobile applications, um, and also uh, interoperability. Uh, so um, you can, you should, the LMS should ideally be able to adapt uh, external tools. Uh, implement web services and interfaces to interface uh, with all, all these tools, uh, webs, uh, social networks, uh, which means implementing uh, interoperability protocols and obviously doing all this in a secure uh, manner. Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, you have uh, here uh, we have the, where the service oriented architectures come into play uh, because they can provide an approach to this interoperability. Uh, you can have various uh, blocks of the architecture decoupled uh, so that if you need to upgrade or uh, 
uh, or change one of them, you just change that particular block. Uh, also, by cutting things in, in blocks, uh, different objects, uh, you can provide uh, with your students, your clients, uh, with a better variety, better access of uh, tools. Uh, also, uh, the teachers uh, who, in a lot of cases, use their own um, tools that they have developed or that they are not very popular and they are not incorporated inside the VLMS, well, they have uh, a, a way to access these tools from within the learning management system. And also, the good thing about uh, service oriented architectures is that you don't need to go through any interface changes. You just um, plug uh, the, your blog inside the LMS and you access it from there. Uh, so this is one way to go about uh, providing flexibility and interoperability. Uh, and uh, then you have, um, when we present here, a couple of uh, specifications. Uh, the first one uh, is the Open Knowledge Initiative uh, that uh, yeah, provides a standard architecture of uh, common services across uh, the various systems. Uh, they have their uh, interface definition that they call open uh, O6, it's open service interface definition, and uh, actually they are um, software contracts of interoperability. Uh, they are compatible uh, with most uh, specifications, and they provide uh, tools for uh, authentication, uh, authorization, login, and so on. Uh, the advantages of this approach uh, is the ease of development. Uh, there is a uh, factory for uh, all the common services uh, mentioned here. Uh, and obviously, uh, we have reduced integration cost. And uh, we um, wind up with the software that can be reused in many different platforms. Uh, a second specification, uh, and we will uh, talk a little bit more about that uh, in, in this work, uh, is the uh, one provided by the IMS Global Learning Consortium. Uh, it's called the uh, Learning Tools for Interoperability, LDI. Uh, what LDI does is uh, defines the way for an external application to uh, reach uh, within uh, the LMS. Uh, so you have uh, the LMS, which is the tool consumer, and the tool producer, which is the external tool that we need to uh, LTI, LTI uh, focuses on the load space and provides a set of parameters uh, so that the communication can be achieved. Uh, this is an uh, example that we have uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, we have developed uh, internally. This is the Moodle LMS, and inside you can see that we are accessing uh, the Google Docs. Uh, from, uh, so we provide a view of Google Docs within the LMS. Uh, so the proposal of, the, of the, this work uh, that uh, Dr. Charles Severance is uh, implementing uh, is, uh, is to be, which is uh, geared towards the tool uh, producers. So the people developing the tools. It's a framework that uh, facilitates the writing of, uh, this, uh, of these tools or to provide LTI in the LTI interface to the tool uh, uh, producer. Uh, so uh, the idea is to create a learning ecosystem that it is uh, that is LMS agnostic. So you don't really uh, develop for a specific LMS. You just uh, develop for something that supports LTI. Uh, so, Chugi uh, can be viewed as a, a hosting environment. Uh, you have uh, a Chugi running and we need the tool. So, uh, the LMS will uh, interface uh, with Chugi uh, directly. Oh, sure. mm. uh, actually, uh, right now, uh, the version is PHP, the existing version. Java is, uh, is on the works. Uh, you uh, install. You can install the uh, Chugi uh, locally, um, or you can also choose to install it uh, 
on a cloud uh, platform, for example. So uh, what, what this guarantees is that you have all the data of the tool uh, under control. Uh, and uh, the API uh, of the code is inspired from uh, Moodle. So if you code it from Moodle, uh, it's easy to, uh, to get into it. So this is uh, the idea. Uh, so you have a list of applications, App Store, could be a repository or whatever, you have the application. So you install the various tools inside the hosting container and then the hosting container provides all the tools for the communication with different analysis. And uh, on, um, the future work on that is to, uh, to finish developing the Java implementation. Uh, now it's just PHP. Uh, better the support for installing Turkey on a cloud infrastructure like Amazon, for example. And uh, also the idea uh, to promote and showcase Chugi. Uh, until now, not much has been done here because uh, the idea is first to provide a couple of implementations and then uh, move towards uh, promotion. So uh, that's all. Thanks.